Today we are at Heron's Head Park in San Francisco, talking with members of the project team about their plans to protect this wetland using nature as a way to engineer resilience to erosion and sea level rise. Let's dive right in. My name is Carol Bach. I'm the Environmental Affairs Manager for the Port of San Francisco. I'm Katherine Boyer. I'm a professor of biology at San Francisco State University at the Estuary and Ocean Science Center. My name is Rod Iwashita. I'm the Chief Harbor Engineer for the Port of San Francisco. My name is Marilyn Latta, and I'm a Project Manager with the State Coastal Conservancy. I'm Eddie DeVita. I'm a Civil Engineer with Environmental Science Associates. Hey, I'm Erica Peterson, and I'm a Project Manager in the Engineering Department at the Port of San Francisco. And San Francisco Bay is directly connected to the outer coast of California. It drains 40% of the state's watershed and it's an important estuary that provides rearing habitat for salmon, feeding habitat for hundreds of thousands if not millions of birds on the Pacific Flyway. The beach here at Heron's Head Park has been eroding over the past 20 years and so the scope of this work is to rebuild it and to create a living shoreline that will protect the beach from future erosion and sea level rise. One of the reasons that we're excited about this project, why it's a high priority for us, is one, because of the urgency. Every year that we don't control shoreline erosion, we're losing marsh. But also, it's a great opportunity to demonstrate the function and effectiveness of coarse material marsh fringing beaches. And I'm hoping that having that experiential, personal connection to a nature-based shoreline resilience solution will really inspire people, the voters of today, but also the kids of today who will be the restoration practitioners um, through the mid-century. I'm hoping that it will inspire a real interest and commitment in nature-based solutions. In recent years, as we've seen the impacts of all this heavy infrastructure on the ecology, there's been a big push to uh, find better solutions that don't just provide the shoreline protection that, that we need, but also can support wildlife. We're really interested in restoring this very endangered plant called Sueda californica. And so that's the California sea blight and it's considered to be extinct in San Francisco Bay. This coarse sediment that will then create wave-built berms along the edge of the marsh that needs to be protected will then have sueda planted into it. And then the sueda, we hope, will help to further stabilize that sediment. This project is exciting for everyone because, you know, we spend a lot of our lives hearing about how humans are negatively affecting the environment all the time. That's all we hear. and. I feel like we never hear about the exciting good things we do for the environment. A lot of the Port of San Francisco, you know, seven and a half miles of, of shoreline that we um, have jurisdiction over, a lot of it is built. And this is one of the, the few areas where we've got the ability to look at a nature-based solution. This is one of the tools in the toolkit that we, we need to use um, as a region to deal with sea level rise. It's important for us to get the body of knowledge and experience with contracting techniques out into the community to know what works and what doesn't work. They are engineering solutions, let's be clear. This is engineered work, um, but it's intended to work with nature and use natural processes. There's a potential for a lot of lessons to be learned here and then that we can take and apply throughout the rest of the Bay. One of the cool things with this project is that we get to demonstrate uh, these natural infrastructure techniques for shoreline protection. And these sorts of dynamic solutions to, to climate change and sea level rise are going to be so important over coming decades. And it's really great to be able to start to install them now and learn from them and, and build the, the knowledge and, and scientific basis for applying these throughout the state. Um, they're just going to be so essential for, for preserving these landscapes um, through the coming century. I want to thank all of the individuals contributing to this Prop 68 project, especially the community-based nonprofit Environmental Education Group, Literacy for Environmental Justice, which will bring in a team of young eco-apprentices from the surrounding community to help carry out this work. This unique project is positioned to become an exemplary case study for the state by bringing in the surrounding community and relevant state agencies to protect this valuable and highly accessible tidal wetland from both sea level rise and erosion. I'm Kat Beheshti, California Sea Grant State Fellow with the Ocean Protection Council, 
signing off until next time. And as always, thank you so much for watching.